you pick up your pallet knife and then work that into your meat, give your meat a good old rub. AMD is cooking again, and what they're creating is something called uDNA. Yeah, <laughs> boy. uDNA combines the architectures of cDNA and rDNA. rDNA 4 and the 9000 series of GPUs are basically a stopgap until we get to uDNA. uDNA is also expected to have a flagship card that will compete with the RTX 5090. Basically, their next gen GPUs are about to get a whole lot better. Well, duh. And what I mean by that is, it's gonna get better by even more than you would expect for gaming and especially for productivity. Before we get to uDNA, recent leaks have shown that AMD are testing what appears to be a new RDNA 4 gaming card. AMD has also done the same thing and are focusing on mid and entry level cards. Even though I wish an RX 9080 or 9090 could just drop out of nowhere. Dr. Lisa Su? Hmm? Maybe? At least the RX 9070 and these leaks are early and there's no confirmation that AMD will even release it but it looks kind of awesome. The card I'm talking about looks to be the RX 9080 XT with 32 gigabytes of VRAM. Based on sample testing, it appears that the 9080 XT is 28% faster on average than the 9070 XT in gaming. That plus the 32 gigs of VRAM should put it on par with the upcoming RTX 5080 Super. All of this is based on engineering samples. We know that in the past AMD confirmed that they wouldn't be doing any high-end 9000 series GPUs. Maybe they changed their minds. Or maybe these engineering samples are just test beds for the uDNA architecture. We'll have to wait a bit longer to see what happens. If they do ever decide to release the 9080 XT, it'll most likely be at the end of the year. AMD teases us more than that video I watched late last night. Now that we've got some RDNA speculation out of the way, let me just explain what cDNA and rDNA are real quick. cDNA is essentially AMD's GPUs designed for data centers. cDNA's primary purpose is to maximize floating point operations per second. Focusing on compute intensive tasks such as scientific simulations, machine learning and generative AI. The kind of stuff that isn't all that interesting to the average gamer. AMD designed the system to compete with Nvidia's CUDA. Then we have rDNA, which is AMD's architecture for gaming. Oh, and here's what the DNA stands for. Deoxyribonucleic acid. So why would combining these two architectures be beneficial for everyone? This unification is inspired by Nvidia's CUDA ecosystem, which allows developers to run applications across a wide range of GPUs, from laptops to data centers. Creating a unified architecture simplifies the development process of new GPUs and reduces the development complexity on the software side. This should lead to many more developers adopting the platform, improving AMD's GPUs even further. That is the single biggest reason, in my humble opinion, that AMD's next-gen GPUs will get such a massive boost in performance. Oh man, I can't wait until that statement backfires on me. So now that we've got the why, let's look at what we can expect in terms of performance. uDNA will have about 20-30% to 30 improved gaming performance based on an improved process node, enhanced compute units and better ray tracing. The ray tracing performance is expected to be between 2 and 3 times better than rDNA 4 based on recent patterns filed by AMD, showing a big focus on improving this weak point. I know a lot of people are tired of the constant push for ray tracing, but if you've ever tried to render more than 3 donuts in Blender, you'd know why it's important. And it makes games look pretty when it's implemented correctly, okay? So I'm happy that AMD is fixing one of its biggest Achilles heels. It's one of the reasons I haven't jumped ship yet. Actually, I didn't jump ship because I'm poor and stuck on an RTX 2050 laptop. Comment below what kind of GPU you're rocking. I wonder how many of you are still rocking Intel HD graphics. Anyway, lastly, AI and HPC will get a 40-50% boost in performance from dedicated tensor cores, optimized for compute intensive tasks. AI, another thing many people happen to be very tired of hearing about, but I happen to be an enjoyer of upscaling things. I've been upscaling things since Blender 2.8 on my old 1070 Ti. I use voice isolation in DaVinci Resolve to clear up the background noise, which is also AI. I have been accused of being AI in my own comment section. If I'm AI, where do you think I got all of this cake? I'm just saying, AI isn't always slop, 
it's really good for a lot of things. So we've got an estimated 20 to 30% improvement in gaming, a 2 to 3 fold improvement in ray tracing and a 40 to 50% improvement in AI and HPC. I'll link all the sources in the description below. Basically, next gen Radeon GPUs will be better at gaming but even better at productivity, which is what many of us have been waiting for from AMD for years now. We want a GPU that can game well and get some work done, whether it's video editing, VFX, engineering and so on. That's why Nvidia has been able to keep so much of the market share all these years. They have a great balance between work and play. When can we expect to add this to our wishlist that we'll never click add to cart on? Next year, 2026. It'll potentially be coming on the PlayStation 6 as well, whenever that comes out. And who knows, maybe the Steam Deck 2 will come with UDNA since Valve said it won't be releasing a Steam Deck 2 on the new Ryzen Z2 chips because the performance difference is not significant enough. We need another Steam Deck, Gabe! Make Linux even more mainstream! I'm an adult, I need to calm down.